Okay, next few minutes, Mud Fossil University and me, Roger, the voice of Mud Fossil University, will take you through a tour of energy. And it would be a great idea and a wonderful thing for you to do to go here to MFU Ethereal Electron Flood Anti-Gravity video and look at that because it will explain in depth the things that I will talk about in the next few minutes. All right, stay tuned. Okay, this is a light wave that's just going through the air from a pulse red laser and uh, it's just going through the air and taking a picture of it as it's free floating. Now, I'm going to go to another picture here that will be as that is being sent through our uh, Venturi accelerator. Now, over here, you see that, remember that wave? Well, now you can see it's very distorted, and it's gotten so distorted, it's extremely distorted here. I mean, look at it. Think about this carefully. Now, don't you so look at that as how cute that is. No. Look at what happened to that wave. That wave was literally almost a full, and, and now it is a laser-driven, highly accelerated, white, energetic energy mass. That's all I can say. Now, this is the accelerator that is sucking that that actual electron or this particle mass, I'm not sure what it is, I'll call it an electron, into this Venturi. And it's just a simple Venturi. And you look it up, you know what a Venturi is. Two big round cylinders with a slot in the middle and it has to, as this spins, it says the, the diameter is too big to get through there so it has to crush itself. There is no option other than to accelerate and it does. And when it comes through here, it becomes extremely chaotic and I'll show you some more pictures of that. And this is the, the radiation and you can see it's stepping down in steps, which is probably the quantum. That's what I think. Now, so that's that's the acceleration. So light, I'm saying, can be accelerated. Now, then when that acceleration comes through there, we have some red. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'll get this. Okay. Well, this is good enough. All right. Once it comes through the accelerator, this is looking straight down into the acceleration. These are the actual particle trails, and. This one here is a highly, highly, highly accelerated one that probably came directly through the center, un, undisturbed, unmolested, whatever you want to call it. All right. So we see, and you see all these different colors and these different densities. That indicates that they're different frequencies of different particles. Okay, this is what I call light chaos, and the the accelerator is over in this area and they're coming through and just extremely energized and then they start to step down in power and some of them will cut across other ones and they will crash into them creating light trumpets and, and the other last one I showed you was that one little bright spot remember that in that whole shower of discs because that takes it very 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 important in a second now if there's any doubt that it's a spinning circle and I which I showed or I will show it's just exactly like uh, uh, here it is. it's just exactly like this and the particles at the tip and it's spinning like this and as it spins some of them will go through this hole and come over this way and they'll line up here some of them will come through the top and they will line up over there and some of them will get right through the center and they will be the most brilliant so some of them will go off this way if they come down the bottom, they will go off to that way, and they will just flush out through the sides. And that is what creates, the spin is what creates the, um, the lines in these different uh, slit experiments. They don't understand this. They think it's waves of, of nothing. It's waves of, of particles that are coming through. And you can see, as this thing spins through, it drops down, and then they start to slam into the edge here. And then over here it drops down, and then they slam into the edge up here. This just looks like the tip of a drill point. I was a machinist at one point, and this is exactly what the tip of a drill looks like. All right, this is, I think, the most important picture that's ever been taken about light. These are the discs that we saw, and I know they're the light discs. There was no, we could see, there's no question whatsoever, they were light. As they came through that accelerator this was that very high energy particle that I talked about see it's behind here that particle crashed into this disk below here and as that particle started to take on its 
its architecture. You see the slot, the lines here. Maybe you can see. What, let me see if I can get a little better shot on it. All right. You see what's happening there? It's crashed into this disc, and we can see a wave on that disc. Now. What happened was it, it was so highly accelerated, it has extra energy. And energy, apparently, is these little circular disks. And this spit out a little, what I'm going to call a light trumpet. All that is, is one of these. Only a little bitty one. So what does that tell you? That tells me that this and this, if it gets crashed into by one of this, it can make one of this. So this is light, this is accelerated light, this is a particle of light, which I'm going to call a light trumpet, which is less than a light disc, or an accelerated particle. So, bottom line is, it depends on how hard this thing hit that. This trumpet might be a little bitty puppy. It might be a major puppy coming off. I don't know. There's a lot more work to do on here, but it's obvious to me that light can be divided. Now, they never even thought light, we don't even take light into consideration. They don't even think it's anything. It is 0.0005 atomic mass unit. It is an electron. And that electron has escaped from the source because the, the atomic orbitals were so extremely vibrated that it got escape velocity. And that is all it is, as simple as that. So that electron came out of here, banged into this, it gave off a little mini electron. So electron isn't even the, the bo bottom line of energy. I don't know what the bottom line is. There's a lot of work to look at this. I'm just, I, I don't have all the answers, but somebody should look at this. And this has been years, and it's been presented to everyone. MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Yale, everybody. Nobody's even looked at it. Nobody's responded. I don't know if they ever got it. Because I am blackballed in that arena. They don't like anything that I'm doing. So anyway, here's the rest of the video. Okay, I'm going to do this real quick. This is the sun, and it is vibrating extensively in the atomic range, and the electrons in their orbitals are thrown away from the sun, and they spin away from the sun. Electrons, basically only. There are some nuclear particles, but very few. It's primarily electrons, and they come away uh, primarily in the radio frequency range, it appears, they say. Uh, I'll accept that. And they come through space spinning as a particle, but spinning. And as they do, that looks like a wave. So the wave is this. It's like a wave. You see it's a wave, but it's also a particle because it's spinning. Now, that is the key to light, and light, as soon as it impacts with the particles around the Earth or the space station or anything that has a nucleus, the orbital electrons bounce, and if they bounce hard enough, they are emitted back out as visible light or light of some lesser frequency than it was coming in, and the vibration of the atomic mass that it hit is now turned into heat. So sometimes you just get heat, sometimes you get heat and light. Now, the moon re-radiates the light from the sun as a cold light, and it does not have the energy intensity that the light of the sun has. In space, the electrons do not interact with each other because they are all negative. Therefore, they have no compulsion to interact with each other and you don't see them. They are dark energy and dark matter because they are the electrons. They weigh 0 0.00055 atomic mass units and they, so they're dark energy and they are dark matter. Now, that is the nature of matter. That is the claim that Mud Fossil University is making and gravity is nothing more than pulling a negative particle towards a positive mass. And if you can create a positive mass magnetically against the positive mass of the Earth, you can create anti-gravity. And that's what happens when you suck away electrons so fast from maglev. So your magnet has to be at an exact same temperature as the amount of electrons being sucked away from it to make it go into a positive condition to repel the Earth. Boop. 
and it pops up into a quantum state away from the coldness that is affecting it. That is the nature of electronics. It's the movement of electrons in the ether of everything because everything is infused with electrons. Space is completely saturated with them. That is the water of space. Once it hits the material aspect of anything, including the Earth, it, ex it, it ex impacts, it literally impacts like a hammer hitting some type of a matter. And at that point, it does its job and it is absorbed in one manner or another. And that's why they say, well, if you observe it, it goes away. Well, it's done its job. It's either t t giving up a piece of light so you can see something shaking and vibrating the molecules in your eyeball or it has created heat or some other form of light. So it's, there's nothing mysterious here. It's, uh, it's just not being thought of in the correct way or, or, or even considered in the correct way. Because I've been putting this out for years, I, you know, and I have a unity theory uh, that, that explains every single thing. <laughs> every single thing. So no, there's no holes at all in it. And, and, and nobody look at it. And I have the physical evidence and the proof and, and the, uh, the actual visual reproducible evidence that could be, I think, at least examined. I mean, I don't know if it's right or not, but it sure looks right to me. So anyway, that's the story about light, heat, and the interaction of, of how it's produced, dark energy, dark matter. I suppose that's it for now. All right, they claim the redshift happens because that everything's moving away from everything else. I say that's that's not correct at all. I say that the redshift happens because everything all light is being magnetically pulled by everything that it passes by, so it is elongating as it travels. Now, I can prove that because they claim that light does not change speed, first of all, which I know that's wrong and I've shown that. Secondly, they claim that light shifts because everything is speeding away. And thirdly, they claim that light goes beyond the speed of light. And they say that they can't go beyond the speed of light, but all of a sudden they say, well, it's, it's going so fast away, it's speeding up. Well, it's not speeding up, it's being pulled by more and more and more mass. So it becomes longer and longer and longer and shifts more and more towards the red. It has nothing to do with the things running away from us. It is the further away that light is coming from us from, the more matter acts on it, restricts its forward movement, elongating the wave. It's as simple as that. Because they say it gets goes beyond the speed of light once it gets so far away from us. That's insanity. They can make up anything they want and they do. It's just absolute fantasies that they come up with. And just exactly what I said, dark energy is light in transit. It's in the vacuum of space, not interacting with any nucleated particles, and therefore it's unrestricted and it does not interact with itself itself or any other particles until it hits something with a nucleus to be absorbed or bounced. That is the nature of everything. Now come up to Mud Fossil Unity, come, come University, and stay here. Subscribe. Think. Don't just read books and only people are right, because they're not. They're not. And, and they're not paying attention to what is right, because they are already uh, invested in this dogma, which is not correct. And they will look like they are not experts if they even turn their eyes towards correctness. And they can't stand that. But they have to because we want truth.